Kathy. Kathy King, thank you so much for being with us today. You know, I have been wanting to do this show actually for about six or seven months and just waiting for the perfect guest. And I feel like that's you. Oh, thank <laughs> and you. And so thanks for being with us in studio. Now, I actually discovered you because of the CTV article about okay. the Missing Kara uh, billboard the campaign. The billboard, yes. And so tell us about... Kara, tell us about her story. What happened? What oh. happened to her? What happened to you? Okay, well, the truth is I don't know what happened to Kara. Uh, I know that she was having a difficult adolescence. She was a young woman who got caught up in... Um, uh, caught up with friends who didn't have her best interests at heart. She uh, struggled with drug use. Uh, she struggled with mental illness. And uh, one day she disappeared from the streets of Edmonton. That was in 1997. And that was probably the longest month of my life. Uh, when I didn't know where she was, I uh, tried to phone the police. I tried to look for her. I tried to carry on life as usual. And, uh, and then finally, she, uh, an unidentified body was found in a field outside of Sherwood Park. So that was September 1st, 1997. So I've been dealing with this for you know, a long time, over 20 years. And so after the, uh, the, first, the first year was probably a shock, as it, as it is for anyone who loses a child, where there's been particularly, well, losing a child is difficult, losing a child to murder is difficult losing a child after she or finding out that a child uh, has been murdered after she's been missing for a month is difficult so so there was a lot to deal with and um, but I had always believed that good could triumph over evil that there was um, that we all had the, the capacity to make good out of the things that came to our life and I never thought I would be tested quite so uh, dramatically. And uh, so then I thought, well, this is not really about me anymore. This is about her. And she is only one of many, many young women. At that time in, in Alberta, there was a lot of women disappearing, a lot of women being found murdered, bodies being found in fields. It was a really dark time in, in Alberta's history. And so I just started looking for things that I could do to start making a difference. So my website uh, is a result of 20 years of experience. It tells my daughter's story. It tells my story. Uh, and then, uh, so I, I, after 20 years, I thought, what am I going to do with all these, all this, this compiled notes and, and whatnot? So I, I uh, 2017, I worked on a manuscript. And then I had the manuscript kind of in, in more or less completion. And then I thought, what am I going to do with the manuscript? Um, and the manuscript it, is a story the, of what the, happened. The story right? of what happened. It's told in four parts. It's the season of life. And the manuscript is posted on the website. Missingkara.ca. The, the website is missingkara.ca. The, the manuscript is seasons of life. There's a link on the face uh, on my um, uh, what do you call it, a uh, homepage where you can go to the manuscripts. The manuscript is a, a compilation of 367 short stories. So each day is written as a little story in itself, but when you put them all together, it's a mosaic of her life. So the autumn season, which is my season, is... So the first story was, you know, the, the first part is more about her life. The, the autumn season is about how I've sort of pulled it all together in the autumn of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that that my time is perhaps limited and and I don't want her story to be lost so oh. so instead of self-publishing I decided to publish on my website so it's a gift it's oh, a gift wow. to the people of Canada it's a gift to the people of the world uh, because it's more important that they read it than that I receive money for selling it and and so I just want people to sort of yeah take time to read the message amazing the message and I think it's so beautiful how you've turned you. the pain of what you've gone through into powerful purpose and I want to say when I was reading through yeah. your website I was okay. reading through some of the blog posts uh, I read your birthday tribute to Cara oh and, to hers yeah and I was struck because we were born uh, two months apart oh my goodness and I, I remember you saying something in our pre-interview oh, about okay. how you know this can happen to anybody I know and uh, you know talk about you know how you went from there to here what were some of the the signs some of the things that happened uh, you know that that maybe people should be watching for, be aware of in oh, you just mean a in, minute or two. In terms of what makes young women vulnerable, mm -hmm. 
Oh, well, I mean, the things that, that the biggest thing, of course, is drugs and, and um, drugs and exploitation. And I know that there's been a lot of work done about how to educate, um, well, no, I guess it's even beyond that. I mean, what makes you know, some young people vulnerable? Because some young people are more vulnerable to being caught up in drugs and exploitation than others. And the things that, that make them more vulnerable are probably a sense of unhappiness within themselves, a sense of economic disadvantage, a sense of, of not belonging in the world, the so-called you know, so normal world. And so they're looking for uh, uh, high-risk kids that like like adventure. So that was one of the things. My daughter was somebody who liked adventure. She didn't understand the dangers. Uh, she didn't, you know, when friends introduced her to drugs, she, well, and I don't even understand. I mean, addiction is, is a very complex issue. And, mm -hmm. and so what makes some people, I mean, a lot of kids try these things. What makes some kind of fall into this horrible world of addiction? And then once you're in the horrible world of addiction, you're so much more vulnerable, more vulnerable. to being exploited. So so those wow. are the things we need to watch for as parents. I mean, yes, it could happen to anyone, but I think we need to be very aware as a, as a society to those who are more vulnerable yeah, and, and to sort of identify the, the, those issues in the schools. Yeah. yeah, and as you're sharing your story yeah. and others are sharing their yeah. stories, you know, it's giving the rest of us cues of what to, what to watch for. Thank yeah. you for your courage. And yeah. there's other people of courage in our nation as well who have really taken up this cause, and some of them are in the Parliament of Canada. Yes. Absolutely. And so what I want to do right now is we're going to actually watch a clip of okay. Romeo Segana. She's actually from the NDP. Okay. And a a powerful speech that he brought to Parliament, which I think was one of the lead domino moments okay. to launch the inquiry. Okay. And so I'd love to talk to you about your involvement with that. Okay. We're going to watch Absolutely. that clip and we'll be right back right after this. Okay, thank you.